So in Puget Sound, when I we did uh, we did a sort of a strategy session, and we determined that shallow water derelict gillnets are where we're going to place our limited capacity and limited resources. These derelict gillnets are made of monofilament line and they don't degrade in the environment, they're plastic. So if you can picture a derelict gill net, basically the fisherman will, uh, if he gets into trouble and he has to cut his net, they will remain sometimes suspended in the water column and they become kind of traps for fish and uh, diving birds and mammals. A small fish will dart in and out of the mesh and predators will go after those fish and get captured in the nets. And as those animals get captured in the nets, then they become bait for more scavengers. It's a self-baiting situation, and they'll continue to fish indiscriminately for as long as they're down there. We've removed nets that are clearly uh, older than 20 years. We used to talk about this problem, in, in, uh, and we would compare it to if you had a, a lot of traps that were set in the forest, and they continued, and they were left uh, or lost by the trapper and continuing to capture animals in the forest, there would be a huge outcry. Well, that's what's happening in Puget Sound, but nobody can see it except for divers. So what you have are these nets underwater, completely unseen, causing a huge amount of damage. This program from the day one has been what we call a no-fault program. Um, we, we understand the fisheries. We know that people inevitably will lose commercial fishing gear. So what we would like to do is involve as much of the commercial fishing industry in this project as possible. We'd like to know from gill netters and crab fishermen where they lose gear, the causes of losing gear, what, what, what happens in their daily fishing activities that can result in a lost gear, because then maybe we can develop some policies, programs, or instructions that could reduce that gear loss. Having the experienced divers are really important. These guys are harvest divers. They spend half their life underwater harvesting sea cucumbers and urchins and other species, gooey ducks. So they're very, very comfortable underwater. Um, they know how to handle themselves and they're really capable of working hard on bottom, which a typical sport diver would not be. So these guys brought a lot to the, to the operation of the project. They brought a lot of good ideas on how to stabilize the gear and bring it up in a safe manner. And it really went a long way toward making the program successful. The nets, for the most part, that we're picking up today are uh, considered a legacy net, and uh, now they've kind of become assimilated into the uh, natural environment. So you'll have a lot of growth on them, and uh, it'll actually look like look like part of the bottom now, but but it's still doing still doing the job even even though there's a lot of sea growth on them. They're designed so you can't even see them in the water column, and. And we, we actually watched the gill netter drop it, lose it, and we went back, you know, four hours later and there was already, already dead fish in them. Uh, these nets can be very large. They can cover over vast areas. They can uh, obstruct the access to little interstitial spaces, crevices, caves, things like that, that juvenile fish need for protection. So they do a lot more damage than just actually capturing and killing animals. They actually degrade the habitat and the service functions of those habitats that those animals depend upon. One of the things we've noticed is when we pull those nets out, um, almost immediately those areas start to recover and it really restores the, the habitat. So far in our organization, we've removed over 4,000 derelict gill nets from Puget Sound. We think there are about 1,000 left in Puget Sound. So we're making a lot of progress and a lot of headway. And now because gill, the gill net fleet is smaller and uh, the fishing effort is lower, we have a pretty good handle on any newly lost nets. We think there are about maybe 10 to 30 lost gill nets every year in a pretty active fishing season. So that's a pretty low number compared to what was happening in past years. So we're not seeing the kind of reaccumulation of these nets after we remove them. So once we remove them, the problem is solved. That's the good news of this program. When we pull one of these nets up off the bottom that are full of dead crabs and fish and birds and marine mammals, and we put it in a plastic bag and we send it to the landfill, I know when I go home that night that that net's not going to kill any more animals on the bottom. That's a really rewarding feeling.